Thank you. Thank you. Uh, as Dwayne said, I am an Army veteran, uh, which means if you're not laughing at my jokes tonight, you're letting the terrorists win. <laughs> oh my God. I uh, did six years in the Army, uh, did two deployments overseas. People ask me all the time what it's like being employed, and honestly, it's a really tough question to answer, to be honest with you guys, you know, because what am I supposed to say? You know, what's it like being completely removed from friends and family, cut off from the rest of the civilized world? You guys, it freaking rocks. <laughs> <laughs> you know how much stuff I got out of whenever I was deployed? Sure, there was the whole terrorism thing, but you know what <laughs> suck? Not having to mow the grass <laughs> because there was none. <laughs> not having to sit in traffic <laughs> there was none <laughs> not having to talk to my dad oh <laughs> I didn't want to yeah. <laughs> okay, I get it. literally the best in fact if you ask me the army should change a new recruiting slogan to something like the United States Army want to get away <laughs> I, uh, I am a veteran though. I'm actually a disabled veteran believe it or not I was uh, blown up by a suicide bomber in Afghanistan in 2014 it uh, left me with a pretty traumatic brain injury and partial deafness in my right ear but if you think that's bad you should see the other guy <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, just glad you guys got that joke. <laughs> Sometimes it could bomb harder than he did. <laughs> you know, Bobby, I uh, bombed a few weeks ago at another show, so it's good to hear some laughs today. Uh, I always get a kick out of the phrase bombing uh, whenever it's used in comedy. As uh, someone who's bombed and been bombed before, I can confirm to you all here today that those two experiences are <laughs> not the same. <laughs> <laughs> I always enjoy swapping stories of other comedians about times that they've bombed. My story usually wins. <laughs> <laughs> If all this talk about bombing is too traumatizing for you, I just want to say congratulations. You've now made an already sad situation into something completely about yourself. <laughs> You're now like the worst white woman you know on Instagram. <laughs> I, uh, I am disabled though. I uh, suffer from a little thing called PTSD which if you are unfamiliar with what that is, it's called an acronym. <laughs> Stands for uh, post-traumatic stress disorder, or what I like to refer to as a pretty tight sickness, dude. <laughs> I've uh, done my best to manage it over the years, but I uh, still deal with a few lingering side effects, uh, the first of which is I can get reoccurring headaches, uh, which I'm sure a lot of you are experiencing right now listening to me talk, so I appreciate your understanding. <laughs> Thank you for your service. <laughs> Doctors will tell me that uh, I can be really short whenever I'm talking to people, and that's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> Those uh, same doctors will go on to tell me that uh, I can do a really poor job of maintaining eye contact whenever I'm talking to people, which honestly, I've got to push back on some because I think I do an excellent job of maintaining eye contact. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know where they really get that one from. <laughs> Probably the uh, biggest thing that I deal with being a disabled vet is being partially deaf. Now, I'll just tell people that I'm fully deaf to make it easier to not have to talk to them. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't come without uh, some consequences, right? 
people come up to me all the time and say, Clay, isn't that offensive to fully deaf people whenever you say things like that? And my response to them is the exact same thing every single time, and it's this. I can't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> this could be it for me. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you for coming out. Yeah.